I have a question for you. Have you ever heard of Kleinefelter syndrome or XXY? Anyone? Anyone at all? That's okay, because in 2017, neither had I. So what am I talking about? At a chromosomal level, women are XX, men are XY, and some people are born with an extra X chromosome, so they're XXY. Now, I know what you're thinking. This has to be very rare, because you've never heard of it, right? XXY is the most common underdiagnosed genetic condition in the world to affect boys and men. The NHS in the UK say that one in every 660 males are affected. XXY is a spectrum, so affects individuals differently, though some of the traits include, number one, height. Many XXY people are taller than average. Number two, visual thinkers. Many XXY people are at home in the creative fields, such as photography, architecture, design, for example. Number three, smaller testicles and lower natural testosterone levels are indicators of XXY. Number four, form of photographic memory. Many XXY people can step into past memories as if they're living them for the first time. It's like instant playback. They see the details. Number five, difficulty with communication. As visual thinkers and learners, XXY people can struggle to use language as a way of conveying what they want to say. Number six, this is a big one. Infertility. The vast majority of XXY people will be unable to have a child naturally. So why am I here? Why am I talking about this? Well, you see, I am XXY. I was born with an extra X chromosome. I'm a real life X-man. Move over, Wolverine. I <laughs> know, so cheesy. <laughs> so let's go back to 2017. My wife, Anna, and I were trying to have a family, following two sperm analysis which came back with zero sperm count, we went to see a urologist. After a brief examination, the urologist said, Gareth, it doesn't work downstairs. You need to get over that and move on. On hearing that news, I would best describe it as an out-of-body experience. My hearing went odd and my thoughts spiraled. At that stage, I didn't know I was XXY, by the way. Over the coming weeks, I entered a form of depression. I felt emotionally broken. Sure, I'd heard of women experiencing infertility, but not men. I felt so alone. We then flew to London for a second opinion. I met a very experienced urologist. He recommended that I get a carrier type test, which counts the chromosomes in a blood sample. After a few weeks, the results are in. I have an extra X. When I began to learn about the condition, it all made sense. I am tall. My background is media production. I have smaller testicles. I have a form of a photographic memory. Thanks to my extra X, I have lower natural testosterone levels than a typical XY man. And hardest of all, I'd be unable to have a child naturally. So having a family with assistance is extremely mentally draining. It is all consuming. At this stage in my life, I had a particular dream that would repeat for weeks and weeks on end. I was standing on a lawn. Anna was a few meters away from me with a small child. I knelt down and put my arms out. The child began to run to me. That child never, ever made it to me as it faded. When I talked to my therapist about this, 
she said it was my brain working through the trauma of not being able to have a child naturally. Over the coming months, I had two operations on my testicles, hoping to retrieve sperm. I took a cocktail of hormones to try and increase my chances. At this stage, we were advised to look at getting a sperm donor as a backup plan. Okay, everyone in this room can do this. I want them to think of a car they aspire to have. We can all do that, okay? Now, I want you to imagine that you're on that car's website and you're at the checkout. Okay, we're all there, good. Now, imagine you can pick the optional extras, such as the color of the vehicle, the alloys, all this stuff. This is very like a donor website. You can filter for skin color, eye color, height, education. It's endless and very, very overwhelming. In the end, we found a small sperm bank in London who were able to help us out. So let's go back to October 2018. The results are in for my final operation. No sperm had been found. It was now confirmed that I was infertile. From this moment on, we used eggs from Anna and the donor sperm. We did three rounds of IVF. On, on the third round on St. Patrick's Day in 2019, we learned that Anna was pregnant. In November 2019, the twins were born. All that pain, all that grief, all that sorrow just washed away from me. Here were, were my children. Someone said to me, hey, you're a dad. Do you want to hold your children? So I ask you, why am I here? Why am I talking about this? We need a positive shift in our society and how we talk about infertility and providing support for XXY people. Now, one of the ways we can help XXY individuals is with TRT, which stands for Testosterone Replacement Therapy. So let's talk about testosterone for a minute. In Europe, we measure testosterone on a scale from zero to 30. A typical XY man's natural testosterone levels are between 19 to 24 on this scale. When I learned I was XXY, my natural levels were between 11 to 13 on the scale. Now, to give you an idea of how my body had learned to adapt, in 2013, I cycled the length of Ireland on a road bike in six days, a distance of 693 kilometers. In 2016, I ran my first marathon. These days, I get an intramuscular testosterone injection every 14 weeks. When I get this injection, it brings my levels up into the XY range. With this injection, my life has improved dramatically. I've also gone on to run a further three marathons for just the pure crack. So let's talk about education. I believe that when our children are learning about biology, this is the perfect opportunity for them to learn there is so much more than an XX woman and an XY man. When it comes to entertainment, and in particular TV and film, in all my years of watching these genres, I've yet to see a lead male character with infertility problems. It is always, always a woman. This is not an accurate representation of society. Right now, there are men out there in this world who are suffering in silence. Male infertility is such a taboo subject. I believe that many don't talk about it as they see it as an attack on their masculinity, a weakness within them. 
is something that they should be ashamed of. I can tell you, you can still be a father. You have that choice. Genes aren't everything. So yes, I am a real life X-Man. But I tell you one of the things I'm most proud about is not having sperm. Yeah, you heard that right. I'm really proud to not have sperm. And the reason is because I am father to the most amazing twins who exist because of the person I am. Thank you. Thank you.